We are in a catastrophic emergency of our own making. We need to come together to save all life before we lose that choice. The Puyallup Tribe of Indians and local activists have been working together to stop a threat to their ancestral waters and their inherent ways of life. This is their story. I, I come here today uh, desperate for attention and help. Um, our Yellow Reservation is uh, looking right in the face of death and disaster, poison and explosion. It's, uh, it's terrifying, as if they haven't done enough to us already. In the spring of 2016, the Puyallup tribe and Tacoma activists celebrated a huge victory. They had blocked plans to build the world's largest methanol plant at the port of Tacoma. However, their celebrations were cut short. Plans to build a liquefied natural gas refinery at the port were advancing. As the fight in Tacoma started to gather attention, another fight for the water was ushering in a new era of indigenous leadership on the environment. <laughs> Tribal nations and allies from all over the world traveled to stand with Standing Rock against the Dakota Access Pipeline. so hard to protect their water, to protect their children, to protect future generations. Because we are experiencing similar battles here at home in the Bell Tribe. We're fighting to protect our habitat so that we can continue to harvest our seafood so that our children can continue to harvest seafood as our ancestors have done before us. We're in the process of planning a trip to Standing Rock. Uh, we all believe our treaty rights matter. And this is no different. This is about life. This is about treaty rights. So I think it's our responsibility to go there and stand with them and show our support. Show the world that if we stand tall and speak loud as one voice, we can accomplish something. Back in Standing Rock, thousands of water protectors and an online army of keyboard warriors were spreading their message to all four corners of the earth. What affects one of us affects all of us. Back in Tacoma, thousands turned up to march in support of Standing Rock and the Puyallup tribe in a joint rally. After surviving a fierce winter, the camps at Standing Rock suffered a brutal eviction. However, the spark lit by the sacred fire of the Ocheti Chicoin was spread far and wide. Meanwhile, Puget Sound Energy had announced plans to start construction, building a liquefaction, bunkering, and distribution facility for frac gas despite not having the necessary permits. The Puyallup tribe contend the facility violates the Medicine Creek Treaty and provisions agreed to in a 1990 land claim settlement. Other voices are raising concerns over the environmental consequences of fracking the harmful impacts of methane, and the dangers the operation could pose to the tribe and local community. The community are also challenging the wisdom of building the facility on a sandbar, 
which is just a mile away from the Tacoma fault line. This presents risks of earthquakes and tsunami. The 8 million gallon LNG tank could effectively hold 4.8 billion gallons of condensed gas. This is enough to fill the Tacoma Dome 30 times over. In April of 2017, I showed up on the scenes of the LNG fight. Um, didn't really know much about LNG. Had met Steve Storms, Nanette, and a couple other people from Redefine Tacoma. And picked up in the fight. You know, Grandma wouldn't let me go to Standing Rock when I wanted to go. You know, I asked her permission and she said, there's 10,000 people on Standing Rock. What impact are you going to have? So I wasn't allowed to go to the Standing Rock fight. But when I seen Anna Bean post about the LNG fight down in the Port of Tacoma, I said, there's my opportunity right there to be somewhere, to actually be on the front lines and actually protect Mother Earth, because I had this feeling that it's just, it's time to protect Mother Earth. As a water protector, I think it's important that we become informed on what's really happening here and that when people were standing with Standing Rock, they need to stand with us here because this is in our own backyard and um, their future generations could be devastated by this. The reason for me and my family and, and my tribe to want to put a stop to this LNG facility is simple. You know, we live in this area. We have lived here for thousands on thousands of years. We have a connection to this land, to these waters, to the salmon, to everything around us. Water Warriors is the name given to describe those working to stop the LNG facility. There is even a Water Warrior Council made up of Puyallup tribal members. They provide indigenous leadership to the various groups fighting alongside them. so that we can dance on her, so that we can get healing medicine from her, and have the natural things that we have to bless us. So I just want another round of applause for our water lawyers. As Native Americans, we've been fighting injustice for 500 years. We've been asking for justice. They don't respect their laws. They don't respect their treaties that they made us sign, that our ancestors didn't even know what they were signing into. About that treaty, commonly known as the Supremacy Clause, Article 6, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution states that treaties are the supreme law of the land. <laughs> now this one, the treaty. You know, first of all, you know, it's paper, you know, you know, what, what could that have meant, you know, to uh, my relatives in the day, you know? You want me to what? You know? <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my, my heart around this, uh, this fence idea, you know, or this, that's your property now, not mine, you know, something that, you know, what? The treaties were an alien concept for tribal people, but their survival wasn't. For turning over much of their land, they were guaranteed certain things. One of which was their right to harvest fish in their ancestral waters. The Nisqually chief, Leshai, was not happy with the terms of the treaty and pushed for his people to get more land and access to water. Although his approach was diplomatic, there was anger at his stance. After fighting in the Yakima Indian Wars and the battle in Seattle, he was framed for murder and arrested. He was convicted and hanged in February of 1858. 146 years later, he was exonerated. Since they were signed, the treaties have been repeatedly violated. But the spirit of Leshai lives on in his people as they carried on their fight for their right to exist. I decided to come down to our sacred lands, where in the late 60s, early 70s, the Piala tribe and the Squally tribes, the local Washington tribes were fighting for their rights, their fishing rights, their water rights, their hunting rights. Back when we were being raided by the police, our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents were being beat, beat by batons by the police departments as they camped right here in this spot. This is 50 years later, but the natives are still coming together and fighting for their issues. It fills my heart that our native people know how to come together. No one owns our mother who is the earth Yeah.
guy said no. He was caught, he was hung. The treaty was made. Nothing else could be done. We said we'll keep our promises if you keep just one. Let us fish for as long as the rivers run. As long. That fight saw federal judge George Bolt rule in favor of the treaties. State officials, along with commercial and sport fishing industries, strongly opposed the ruling. The Bolt decision was upheld by the United States Supreme Court in 1976. That is one of our treaty rights is to be able to fish, to die for gooey duck, to crab. All of those things are being threatened now and they have been for a long time without any recognition and now we, we come here today to ask you to help us to bring awareness to the situation. You know, we're down here. I, I wanted to get out here and document this way of life because this is, this is the way of life that's uh, threatened by everything. We're down here exercising this right that was in the Medicine Creek Treaty, you know, that our ancestors have lived off thousands of years by, by fishing this river. So, you know, I just wanted to come down here because we had a report that said our salmon runs might be extinct in four years, you know, and, uh, we got out here, we prayed on the water, and you know, just a thank you to every salmon that came into our into our toads and into our nets. If we keep allowing fossil fuels to be put in the Port of Tacoma, we have successfully eradicated the Native American by, by completely devastating their food sources. We have lived here for thousands of years in harmony with Mother Nature and Mother Earth. And within 124 years of the fort being in our being down there, they have devastated it. So what happened to the estuary? This is an overlay made up of a map from 1888 over the area now known as the Port of Tacoma. The thick orange line represents the 1873 Puyallup Indian Reservation boundary. The red star marks the location of the LNG facility. Supporters point out that the facility is being built outside of the reservation boundaries. However, let's look at this from another angle. The orange line is the current reservation boundary. The green line at the top is the Medicine Creek Treaty boundary. Treaty rights still apply beyond the reservation boundary and up to the treaty boundary. The mud flats covered a huge area before mid 20th century dredging. The port dumped the silt that was dredged up for a waterway expansion onto the mud flats, creating extra land for docks and industry. Some point to a 1990 land claim settlement and say that the tribe signed over title rights to the land. But the area where the LNG plant is being constructed was never land in the first place. At the U.S. Supreme Court in July 2018, tribes won a case against Washington State involving culverts that blocked the salmon from spawning. Courts have ruled that implicit in the treaties was a guarantee that there would be enough fish for tribes to harvest. Most importantly, they ruled that destroying habitat reduces the population and violates the treaties. There's a time bomb literally being built in the Port of Tacoma right now. And the Port of Tacoma is already polluted and they're building on top of the sand down there. This isn't only a, a, a devastation to this land, but it's a, it's a complete devastation to the water. Our ecosystems are slowly dying and we're here to say enough is enough. The estuary was a vital habitat of the fisheries and is within an area protected by the treaty. When healthy, the estuary provides foraging and spawning grounds for fish and crustaceans. They coaxed our ancestors into signing into these treaties and everything. Our ancestors had bare minimum knowledge of what they were signing into. And now we have the knowledge of what we signed into. And that's what they're scared of. They're scared of brown people because now we're smart enough to know what they gave us. And we're working with that. And they still want to come through here and disrespect our sovereignty. They want to disrespect us as a nation. And we're saying no to their facilities. We're saying no to their pipelines. We're saying no to all this around here. When work started at the site, a group of protectors that became known as the Super Six locked down to an auger and were arrested. 
the city of Tacoma, under the leadership of future Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland, published the Environmental Impact Statement for Tacoma LNG. With the tribe questioning a lack of safety review and the project having gone through several design changes, they requested a supplemental environmental impact statement. LNG is not for Tacoma. It puts a lot of citizens from the Tacoma area in jeopardy, and that's not acceptable to me or anybody from my tribe. For us Puyallup people, the Puyallup River watershed is what gives us life. That is where we are. That is, that is who we are. That is where we come from. When the crew started to lay the pipeline, the tribe and allies mobilized. Protectors insist that every part of the LNG project threatens the community. Pipeline accidents can cause widespread damage. Well, right now, crews are working to shut off gas lines in the Seattle neighborhood after a massive explosion damaged dozens of buildings and sent nine firefighters to the hospital. Well, you know, it looks like a bomb went off in, in this neighborhood, and as dense as it is, it's a miracle no one died. Tribal members and allies came out to pray and sing at the construction sites. Yeah, this is our movement, you know what I mean? You can't stop this. You can disrespect us, you can threaten our lives, you can do all that, you can throw us in jail, but you will never stop this movement. You'll have people out here that'll step up that are tired of seeing their grandmother being raped in front of their eyes, you know? This is the focal point right here. This is our saying, or this is where we can stand up against the destruction of the environment, and the racism that goes with running a pipeline through these people's lands. It is outrageous and white people need to get off their ass and get out here and do something about it. Yahoo means to come together to complete something only completed together. And we have come to Yahoo. Look how many brothers and sisters we have out here with us from all over the place. They have heard the cry. Everything that was kept in the dark is no longer in the dark. It's coming out. There is light being shined in there. And Puget Sound Energy does not like that light being shown in the dark. Our people shouldn't have to continue to stand up for our environment, for our water for our people, for everything that lives in the water. No means no. We don't want it. I shouldn't have to say anymore. We peacefully protested the pipes being put in at the LNG facility. And why did you roll your eyes at me like that? I don't appreciate that, man. We protested for five days. We have took care of this land for thousands of years. Thousands of years. And within 524 years, of Europeans showing up on this land. It has been destroyed and we are on the brink, the brink of total collapse. I've been praying for each and every one of you. I'm not a public speaker. I'm a spiritual person. I'm an indigenous woman first and foremost before everything. And it kind of breaks my heart. I was watching each and every one of you. And I was like, you're here to make our choices, but I don't see one Puyallup up there. I see a government that's constantly making choices, a system that's constantly making choices for my people, for, for indigenous people. The number of protectors coming out to support the tribe continued to grow. Some protectors sat down in front of machinery, causing crews to stop all work.
you know, we're coming down here to raise awareness and put a stop to this. And we put a stop to it tonight. You know, we, we, we've said that we're not a joke. We're not to be taken lightly. You know, that we'll come down here and we'll do this. And, and you know, we, we stop the infrastructure. And I think that'll raise a lot of awareness in the next couple of days. You know, that we've completely stopped them for, for two hours. That got their attention. The next day, Puget Sound Energy came to meet us. Hey! Oh, you know who I am? I have the advantage. You guys are doing research. We've done our research on you guys, too. Oh, yeah, let's talk about your guys' insurance, how your guys' insurance only covers $50 million. Let's talk about how it doesn't cover acts of God or terrorist acts or anything else. You know, it just covers $50 million. And not things... only be the start of a, of an LNG spill. <laughs> I do. I do. But do you let anyone because talk this back? Because is, this, is, this is happening on my land. Uh, it is. This is my people's it's, land. It's historically been your land. Yeah, it's our land. And you're raping our mother for a profit. But that's uh, on the reservation. I don't believe it is on the res I mean, I think, the, oh. I think that yeah, the reservation, I think the tribe believes it is. The entire route of the pipeline extension is within the boundaries of the Puyallup Reservation. Not historically, but actually. We buy gas from uh, company, companies in the Rocky Mountains, companies in British Columbia, companies in Alberta. Those companies may frack their gas. That's, we know that. Unsatisfied with her answers, protectors kept gathering. What's up, man? Huh? 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 Something must be going on, you know, anytime you see, you find ambulance here, you know, we've got red lights, blue lights here, you know, so there, there's something serious going on, right? You know, when I see lights flash and sirens, you know, emergency, right? You know, so that's what I'm kind of thinking. So it's good to see the first responders, you know, for our mother earth here. Some common sense along the sideway, if you will, shoehorned in here between where they're digging down here and where they're vacuuming their mess right here. Leave it better than you found it. We, that's what we're told, you know. Hey, honor the treaties. <laughs> we're all here because the blood of our ancestors run through our veins. So that's why we're here. Yeah. Water is life. And we need to protect all the people that are here. All the people. You know, and those that are bullied or, or too far down the rabbit hole, it says, you know, what we're doing here and how we stand here doesn't concern them. I don't know. Maybe the next water they drink, they should really, you know, think about their life. This isn't normal yeah. for citizens to gather here dangerously on the side of the road, right? This is not normal. This is part of the insanity. We're bringing sanity to insanity out here like this, you know? This is a gathering of many nations of people that are coming together, saying that enough is enough. You know, we don't we don't want this here. You know, I, was, I, I wish we lived in a just world where we could just say no, and this wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? It would just disappear. With the help of the Backbone Campaign, Dakota took the Water Warriors message into PSE's Bellevue, Washington headquarters. The Puget Sound Energy would have people arrested on trespassing charges, but yet they they commit the trespassing every day on our land. They commit that trespassing every day. And they would have the, the, the Bellevue City officers arrest us for that because they felt invaded. They felt their privacy was invaded. They had the police officers tell us that we was going about it the wrong way. But if we was going about it the wrong way, then how are they going about it the right way? And you're going to tell us that we're wrong for doing it the way we're doing, for actually taking the footwork? Because we don't want your pipelines in our, in our lands? We don't want the frack gas pulled from Mother Earth? We don't want your time bomb in our ports, nowhere near our waters. Multiple actions saw the movement grow.
the last time any of you been down to the port of Tacoma? It's fully polluted down there. The waterways, the inlets, everything. There's garbage all up and down the sides. Arsenic in the grounds. Everything. The water warrior spirits were raised when tribal leaders came forward with an important announcement. I do just want to say that the tribal council adamantly opposes this. We, we have been here since time immemorial. Our ancestors fought for this land and now they want to take some more from us, from this little piece that we have. The Puget Sound Energy Liquid Natural Gas Plant is violating all of its permits and we have filed through our attorneys a stop work order on all activity Ooh. that's going on <laughs> in that area. Stop work order documents highlighted that PSC had not received a notice of construction permit, which is legally required to start work. The knowledge that unpermitted work was continuing led to frustrations boiling over. So the night of the rest, me and Darren had found each other. And there's literally a part of this story that nobody knows about that close family know about. But Darren had called me that night and I remember laying there and I already, already felt the full, the full energy off that blood red moon. It was a full moon and you, you know me, I'm from the Wolf Clan, you know, so it makes my, 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 it makes me, makes me act up in full moon, you know, that full moon really makes me act up. So we're sitting there and Darren calls me and I remember my spiritual energy through the roof and I was just, I felt the charge around me. It was like the, the air was electric, you know, we go flying down there and me and Darren had got down to the port of Tacoma and we was on the side of the LNG facility and it was me, Darren, Benita and Mariah and their dog on the side of a road and the basically dark time. You know, lights on in the streets, uh, the LNG facility just looks dark as hell. And Darren was like, this ain't the shot. This isn't where we need to do this at. We need to go somewhere else to do it. Let's go down there where they're putting in the pipelines. It's like, all right, well, we're on our way down there. We go down there and Anna had called me in the middle of that. She goes, oh, happy birthday, brother. Or Merry Christmas. I got your birthday present or something or your Christmas present. I can't remember anyway. She had a present for something, but she comes down there. And we're down there doing interviews. We go across the street and I remember walking across the street and the tribe had the tribe had issued a request to stop work orders to the to the court system or the ninth district court. I believe it was had issued the request. Well, we didn't really read through the paperwork. We thought it was an official stop work order, you know, which it should be from the Piaf tribe. I mean, you're on our land. So if we issue a stop work order, Guess what should happen? Work should stop. This, this is closed off, right? Can we get somebody who's running the back down here? We blocked the road off after arguing with the, the supervisor or the flag guard, whatever he was, the flagger. And the five police departments shows up and, you know, went through the whole the whole respect, the treaties and the lands claims spettlement, arguing back and forth with them and the issued stop work order. We're standing here telling these people that we want to see uh, their permits um, because we believe that they're working without them. They have been all through this process and we're tired of it. It's time for them to step up and do what they need to do and get the hell out of here. Do the Piaf tribe Indians no longer have jurisdiction here? I, I don't know anything about this. You don't know anything about it? Is this it? our reservation? No. I understand that. Is this our reservation? Are you standing on our reservation? This city of Fife is on the Piaf Indian Reservation. Yes. Okay. Because I think what this comes down to is, is this is our home. You know what I mean? Our ancestors have lived here for thousands of years and we still have to be here. We don't want this here on our reservation. What they're doing is horrendous. What they're doing is a disrespect to our sovereignty, is a disrespect to our ancestors and they have police enforcement down here to protect them. We want LND addresses. We want to go sit and shit on their house. Yeah. Let's go take a shit in their front yard. I don't go into anybody's house and disrespect <laughs> them. Are they going to come over here and disrespect ours? That's we right. We don't want this. That's right. My kids don't want this. His kids don't want this. None of our kids want this. It's crazy that we have to we have to fight for what, what we signed into, our ancestors signed into. We have to come down here and fight. No should mean no. Mother Earth is a woman. I mean, everybody knows that. And it's, a, it's in federal law. It's held up in federal court, violence against women. And they think nothing of this. 
Finally got some time to get away, man. Got so many things going on. I had that moment sitting in my chair. I said, why sit in my chair? Get out here. Stand with the brothers and sisters, you know? Get some time to the, to the cause. I, didn't even, I just got a call when we were across town on the way. Down down way. Down here. <laughs> and a bean, Tisha, Chester, Dakota, Pure tribal members holding it down. Who pays the price is going to be Anna, Dakota, yeah. and this kids, Dakota's kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we can't go nowhere, bro. We can't go nowhere. We've lived here for thousands of years. That's what I was saying earlier. We can't go nowhere. Bro, my grandma lives right down around the corner. So we get down there, and Chester shows up, you know, on the video, and I'm getting confrontational. And I remember we were standing there, and I looked over at Chester, my mom, and Anna, and I told him, I was like, we're getting arrested tonight, or I'm getting arrested. And I was like, all right, cool, all right, we're going to be right here with you, and uh, we'll stand there with you, too. We've turned this into a direct action now. We won't allow nothing to continue. We won't allow these trucks to come in and out. We're going to stand here and block this intersection. My brother Chester came up with this idea, and they will be breaking our town if they arrest us. You know, the law is the law. Where's their permit? That's all we asking. Can we see your permit? And they can't even pull it out. They can't bring a supervisor. We're not good enough to have a supervisor come down now. <laughs> They're gonna break our sovereignty even more. We're blocking this intersection. Piao tribal members are blocking this intersection. This is our reservation. This is our land. This is our ancestral land. We don't want these pipes down here. We don't want this anything down here. It's like sovereignty is not dead. It's t it's time to be waking up people it's time to protect the treaties this this direct action needs to happen this is tribal members there's four tribal members down here this needs to happen chester has some paralegal training so he, he he grabs the thing he starts reading through he goes hey this is a request to stop work this is an official stop work order the company works for the same company did in standing rock okay. they're pulling the exact same move out of the, out of okay. the book they're and what they do at the very end yeah. the, 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 the very end they say well if you make a stop then you cost us all this money well you were never supposed to do the work in the first place okay and so that it's, it's a part of it's a, a technique they use over and over and over again and if we walk away we're walking away condoning the illegal act they're doing right and that, I'm not, yeah and, and that's I where i'm not asking right. you guys to walk away right. and okay, i'm just saying yeah. when it comes to traffic coming now all i'm asking is just go block that we're going to if it's traffic if it's traffic Traffic. Going to the construction truck and going to that illegal work, we will be blocking it tonight. I, I, and if we have to be arrested for the future of our children, we understand. Okay. Yeah. You, you realize that when when we're asking, you, it is illegal to block the traffic. Okay. Yeah. And if that if, if you uh, just realize that that is the risk you guys are taking, right? right? Which is which is fine. We're I'm just letting you guys know. Bro. Okay. And I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Our Fault tribal council that. has issued stop work yep. orders because they're in violation. Okay. They and have no permit, bro. They're, they're violating yeah, they the law. I, I, I right. I we stopped construction and stopped the semi trucks from going in and out because they had already shut down that whole street because we was down there and having big rallies down there. So they shut down that whole street so they could finish with the pipeline work. And I remember watching the film and I felt like the truck got closer to me, but he did keep rolling on me but he must've stopped at least like a good five feet away from me. But I felt like he was right on me when they arrested me. You know, I remember the tribal cop jumped up on the window and banged on his window for him to stop. And the one five cop grabbed me and arrested me. He's being arrested. Dakota has been arrested for defending his sovereignty. Chester's now getting arrested. And you know, they're walking me to the car and I'm looking over my shoulder and here comes Chester too. There's Chester. I'm laughing. You know, we get in the back of the we get in the back of the cop car and we go up there. Despite the presence of tribal police, the pair were arrested by the city of Fife PD and were taken off their reservation to a jail 20 miles away. But you couldn't intervene and say you were taken to trial. Why? Yeah. I, mean, I want to take him to jail. Him. I don't want to arrest anybody that's out here. But he needed okay. you to arrest him. He needed you to arrest him. Do you understand how dangerous it is for okay. a Native American okay. man or a black man in America today? I, I'm that's I'm why Native. we asked you to okay. come here well, to not, protect our people. No, you're not no, you're not gonna give me an excuse. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you about yourself. We called for you to come and protect us. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Okay, we're we're here because they're doing an injustice to our tribe. So we're out here trying to protect our, our land. And then you just let the police drive off with two Native American men that are PL tribal members and one of them is my son. You know, a lot of people don't know about me is that, you know, I grew up in the, I grew up in the system and institutions and everything. So I'm just sitting down, you know, I'm just sitting there, I'm waiting for it. 
you know, now I'm going to probably be sitting down for a couple weeks because I told everybody that don't bail me out, you know, and I didn't want to be bailed out because I did want to fast in there. And, you know, Jim Jim and all them, they ended up bailing me out anyways, and Ramon and Anna and everybody met me out there. And... That's my brothers. Oh, man, they're slow in there, man. They're slow. Water Warriors. They Dakota Case. Chester yeah. Earl yeah. just yeah. released. Oh, what's going on? So me and the brother, me and the brother out right here, you know, got a, got arrested fighting for our rights once again, you know. Thought that stuff ended in the 60s and 70s, but here we are today. Oxlo Hill City Council. Can I ask all my Piaf tribal members to please stand up? To know that we are represented under our own flag today. It hasn't fully set into my mind that me and my brother Chester was uh, arrested protecting our sovereignty and that we won that court case within two court dates because the city of Fife said it was too complex to, to go through and didn't even acknowledge our sovereignty. They just dismissed the case without prejudice. And it's truly been an eye opener, you know, and I was thinking of the spot to where I could come down here and do a live video and I chose the mouth of our river. It's bad, you know, like everything that's inside of the port runs off into the mouth of our river. Everything that's been sitting on the top of their pavement just runs into the mouth of our river and our salmon have to sit there and, and, and sit in that and come up river. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to eat farm salmon. You know, I feel like if, if our salmon are gone, we're gone. We have four years. That's what our fisheries predicted. That's how long our, our runs have is four years. And that makes me sad. That truly makes me sad because one day I wanted to fish with my sons. You know, I had dreams of fishing with my sons. What you do to the Puyallup Nation and the people around that live in this area, you do to the entire Puget Sound. You don't just do it to here. You screw everybody. That's only part of the environmental injustice that constantly happens to our tribe. And when I speak of that, we wasn't an urban tribe, but we wanted to be. A city was built up around us. That's how this truly came into existence. And we're constantly fighting for our right to be recognized, not recognized as federally recognized, but recognize that this is our ancestral lands and this is our home. We've signed over a lot of our, we've signed over a lot of our lands in the Medicine Creek Treaty to have these rights. Our ancestors wanted us to have a good life. They looked out for future generations. I think that if they could have looked at into the future and known what we signed over was for this to happen, I think they would have chose to fight to the death. The port saying we're in violations of our lands claim settlement, but we've held up every part of our lands claim settlement since we've signed into it. We're the only ones that have held up our side. You know, I was watching everything that was going on in Florida with the residents in Florida that fled the hurricane. Um, we've seen the stories of the people leaving their pets behind, leaving their pets and their dogs tethered to the pole, or, you know, tethered to the yards out there. And that was a complete absence of morality. They fled for their lives. They left their animals there to perish. And, um, this is how I feel living and working within within the blast zone with no evacuation route, without any safety standards, knowing that Puget Sound Energy is doing construction right now without the proper permits, that you guys aren't protecting us enough to make sure that those things are in place. I don't feel protected. I feel like there's an absence of morality and I'm tethered out there waiting for the hurricane to come in and you guys are just bailing. We have hurricane after hurricane hitting our coast. We have earthquakes, that 8.1 that hit in Mexico. That's our mother getting ready to fight back against the cancer cell that lives on top of her, us. PSC is my enemy. You're my enemy. I will fight you. My people will fight you. Mother Earth will be here. She will recover. We won't. I might get a little bit passionate because I'm here talking about my life and the way of it. You understand me? I've been sitting here watching you guys do your texting and diddling around. Why people are here trying to, to share with you change the way you feel instead of the way you've been thinking we have no voice we've never had no voice and the only reason we have anything in any of these communities is because we have to stand up and fight for it we always have does the treaty mean nothing to you it's a supreme law of the land gentlemen 
And ladies, you know, I came here expecting some sort of way maybe we can talk about this, but I see the diversity. Looks like one more of the same with a period on the end, brother. I don't understand what we are saying here because you're disconnected. You are infringing on my sovereign rights. You get that? No means no. What part of that don't you understand? You, brother, why haven't you said nothing? You represent the East Side. Just the white part? Come on, man. I'm tired of coming in here month after month, warning you guys of the dangers that are happening when we see the dangers happening all around us. We're literally in climate change. The earth is heating up. Our, our seas are dying. The world is on fire. Does that not make sense to you guys? What's that money gonna do in the end? Absolutely nothing. It'll make a good fire. That's about it. You know, we're in serious times and we need some serious people here. We need leaders, not electeds. At any given time, one of you can stand up and say, hey, you know what? Let's wait on this. Let's do what's right. Let's let some common sense show up and show out. We're not guests, the tribe. We are your host. You are the visitors. Our no means no. If I was to start digging a freaking hole right here, what would happen? I'd have Don come up here and arrest me. I asked those guys, everybody's just doing their jobs around here. We're down there getting people arrested. The time we're talking is freaking over, brothers and sisters. This will, this will come to an end. We already got people arrested. The natives are restless. And it's going to get physical. We're stopping PG Sound Energy from getting the air permit. No construction. Bam. Done. Zip deal. The last permit PSC required is a notice of construction from the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency. Hopes of a good outcome were raised after the agency rejected PSC's initial application. We're going to do everything we can to stop this and block this and end this and not let this happen because we want to live and we're responsible for protecting those salmon. They're not our first line of defense, they're our only line of defense, they're the only agency that's uh, standing up. However, the agency was not enforcing their own violation order against PSE for building without this permit. It seems like they're retracting some of the things that they're saying or that they've been uh, misquoted. The process here has rendered laws intended to protect the environment and coastal areas of this state meaningless. So here we have a facility that's operating under notice of violation from the air agency. They could care less about us, the citizens who live here. They could care less about the tribe and its homelands and its people and its treaty rights. And they could care less about the laws here. The agency went on to order a supplemental environmental impact statement to study life cycle greenhouse gas emissions. But when the agency released the draft SEIS, it was so flawed that the Washington State Attorney General labeled it fictional. We're down here at the, the LNG facility that Puget Sound Energy is building unpermitted. We have some individuals in there that have logged down to the facility machines and have a banner from what we know at this point. Carlo Foley and Steve Way had used the cover of a dark, foggy morning to slip into the LNG site and quietly climb onto a crane in a bid to stop construction. This action took place on the same day that two members of the Super Six were due to stand trial. This is not a protest. This is a gathering about the water. You know, we're out here to to to, uh, to, to to create the awareness, you know, for the next seven generations. Just like to say yeah. that each and every one of us council people are sworn in here to protect and preserve these lands and our people, and that's what we're here to do. And we thank those people in there that are sacrificing their self today in this cold, cold weather to try to stop this, and we appreciate it. Killing the water, you kill the, you kill, you you kill all the that lives in on and around yep. it, and that includes us. Yep. Yeah. That includes us first. We're the ones that go extinct before that goes. The herring, the salmon, and the whale, and us. Yep. Exactly. We're, we're on that list right now. Mm -hmm. they, they need to know that the Puyallup people are here. We don't, we don't stand for this facility being constructed and built illegally permitted. Who does Puget Sound Energy think they are? We've tried every diplomatic effort possible, and, and they're not hearing us, and they're having a complete disregard for human life, for wildlife, for treaty rights, for, for the over 80,000 people that live in this area. 
you know, so, the people that are being quiet and giving their consent, you know, and just looking from afar, or hey, it doesn't bother me like that, you know, are, are, are part of the problem. They don't realize that they're racing at light speed to a reservation lifestyle with, with, with lousy air, lousy water, lousy food to eat and drink, you know what I'm saying? Got that medicine up there. Look at that medicine caught on fire. You know, we're sending that good smoke their way. You know, sending that good, good vibes, good energy, love energy. Oh, there they are, yeah. Can you see? Sure, Can you see their banner? Look at no, they took it down. As the sage filled the air, the fog lifted, and for the first time, we could see Carlo and Steve. The two men stayed in the crane the entire workday. They were then arrested. I'm at the LNG facility, in the Port of Tacoma, and groups of activists have blocked each one of the gates into the LNG facility, stopping construction workers from who are pulling in. Look at that, just death coming out of that. Death, risk, threat. That's what I see when I see that. After holding space for several hours, the tripods came down with no arrests made. And there was big news from the courthouse as the Super 6 trial ended with acquittal. The city was unable to prove trespassing and jurisdiction over the tribe's interest. Emboldened by this verdict, hundreds came to stand for the third action in a week. It's all about the water, the saline, and the fresh water. We are here for the salmon people and our lives and the way of it, oh ho, good morning, thank you. Oh, you know, these guys, these, these criminals, these corporate law enforcers over here like this, you know, that are protecting the banksters, the profiteers, these people that are destroying, desecrating this life and the way of it, you know, my water, your water, our water. This is the spirit of the people fighting back. We don't want the LNG facility on our, on our ancestors' bones. We don't want it on our waterway. We don't want it to threaten our threaten our salmon even more than they're already threatened. They are standing here on the host people's land, you know, that is uh, protected under the Treaty of 1854. And in the courts this last week, you know, they, uh, yeah, whose land is it anyway? I guess in the courts now, they, uh, they said that the tribal cops should have been down here arresting. If anybody's going to get arrested, tribal cops. If they're going to jail, tribal cop jail. And I uh, expressed that to that Tacoma uh, police, and he's uh, saying, no, 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 we've got the jurisdiction. This is our jurisdiction. And uh, so I said, that's where we kind of locked the horns a little bit. So we're like, uh, no, no, I don't think so. You don't have jurisdiction over the supreme law of the land. They were supposed to start arrest at 12.01. So far, we have nobody locked up, but they are starting to border off. It's happening right as as you watch, this is happening right now, this is live. You know, this colonial herd, we gotta come down here and show them how to, how to practice their own democracy. When are you guys gonna arrest the real criminals? When are you guys gonna arrest the real criminals? So thank you to all the water protectors for coming here and standing on our land and standing with the water and Watching a massive arrest go down. Anybody who does not move out of the road is being, yeah, they come. Is being threatened with arrest. This is happening live. Share this out. They are in SWAT gear. They are planning on making a large arrest of people who are praying and peaceful. They're coming in. Somebody get this information out. Share this out. Billy clubs for people that are peaceful and prayerful. This is starting to look like the 1970s all over again for protecting the salmon. Right now, this is happening in Tacoma. Tacoma, Washington, Tide Flats. Facing the potential threat of arrest or harm, a prayer song was sung in response.
As the song ended, the police quickly got into formation and left. Thank you. Protectors took their message to the state capitol as a 2018 legislative session got underway. You know, we don't have rights like they fight for. We have responsibilities. This is what we're working for, too. Our treaty rights, our treaty rights, our supreme law of the land, and those laws, those laws are being broken. We gave up everything, and you need to understand that. All of you need to understand that we gave up the lives of our children. We did not ask to make that treaty, but that's all we got. That is all we got. <laughs> The no LNG message was taken directly to the governor's office as they attempted to present him with over 52,000 petition signatures. But in a move reminiscent of the early days of invasion, Governor Inslee sent representatives rather than listen himself. Today, we're here in Olympia. It's like, we are the only people who know about this, that a, a treaty exists. This is the supreme, it's not a corporate law. It's not a, a municipal law. It's not a state law. Supreme law of the land. Everything that's happening within our waters is destroying everything. Right now, we're looking at our fisheries. What is left there? Nothing. Nothing. Even as an elder, I can't even get a fish to eat. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to go and protest like the elder did it years ago. But maybe that's what it's going to take. But the government needs to sit down here with on this table again with our tribal governments and take respect for what they have signed also. As a symbolic protest in the spirit of the fish wars, a tarpy occupied the capital lawn for three days before police took it down. In September 2017, Dakota marched into chambers with his nation's flag. Several months later, the city, with an eye on canoe journeys, made an important announcement. We will be flying the Puyallup Nation flag at the Tacoma Municipal Complex, and at the conclusion of the event, we will permanently, finally, display the Puyallup Nation flag within the city council chambers. Thank you for acknowledging that, that you guys are on our ancestral lands, you know. We, we signed away a lot for our treaty rights. And to finally see that you guys are putting the Puyallup flag in here is, is very honoring. It is a symbol of your recognition of whose homelands you meet on. I do hope that these relationships that we're establishing will help us have difficult conversations when those times have to happen. The power paddle to Puyallup was a resounding success. But the massive storage tank of the LNG facility cast an ominous shadow over the event. My message isn't about raising awareness. My message is about standing up for your people and fighting back. <laughs> Each one of our nations has always had warriors. It isn't a warrior's place to go out and kill. It's a warrior's place to defend the people and to provide for the people and take care of the people. And that's why we gotta get past this colonial government's view and ways of doing things and get back to these old ways, warrior society ways, our leader ways, our seahawks. We come from very fierce people. It's time to be fierce for our people. Annette challenges Governor Jay Inslee on treaty responsibility. I wanted to just talk today about the Puget Sound Energy Liquefied Natural Gas Plant. You know, we've been trying to reach your office. Uh, we were not um, 
properly consulted. We are exercising our 1854 treaty rights as a sovereign tribe. But the point I want to make about that is that our federal agencies delegate the authority to the state agencies and then the state delegates authorities to the regional air agency, for example, but no one delegates the responsibility. This this permitting decision is actually not with the state of Washington. But I do believe that the State Department of Ecology did delegate the authority for the supplemental or the environmental impact statement to the city of Tacoma. Well, let me make sure that I'm on the same page. The responsibility for this decision is in the city of Tacoma and their elected leaders. It is in the Puget Sound Clean Air Authority which is an appointed body, which is appointed by elected leaders from the Puget Sound jurisdictions. That is so the, responsibility. the responsibility for the government to government relationship in honor of the treaty and to, to help us to protect our natural resources, it's, we're just alone here. We're an urban tribe. We're not an urban tribe by choice. The city of Tacoma was built around us, not Tacoma, but Tacoma. It's one of our words, one of our stolen words. It's the name of our mountain. It means don't forget the water. And the city of Tacoma, let me tell you, the city of Tacoma doesn't live by that. The city of Tacoma forgot the water a long time ago. The port of Tacoma forgot the water a long time ago. On the day the tribe's flag was to be raised, relations between the city and the tribe were boosted by another announcement. We will join with more than 70 jurisdictions in the United States to recognize and celebrate Indigenous People Day, a declaration that is long overdue. When our flag goes up, you'll be taking on a new responsibility. I need you to think of the Delta Nisqually and look at what your predecessors have done to the Delta here at Piala. We had a most beautiful, beautiful area that is foul and dangerous and cruel. We have ice. We have so many petroleum storage units were a torch waiting to be lit. I want you, I want you to control yourself. <laughs> I want you to think about Nisqually, think about Puyallup, and think about a future where it's cleaned up. I thank the Creator today for hearing our prayers. Our ceremonies are strong, and these prayers for these things to happen have been going on since before I was born. And I keep these prayers going for the unborn children, and that's how our value system in our culture works. You have an opportunity now to recognize us on an issue that we hold dear and we take very seriously. The federal government has a trust responsibility under that treaty that the Puyallup Tribe of Indians signed with the government when everything was taken. It was a trade. And in trade for that, we were to get certain things. So the government has a trust responsibility to the Puyallup Tribe of Indians. The government then delegates its authority for permits, environmental impact statements, and that responsibility that goes along, that trust responsibility, goes with that delegation. The trust responsibility goes with the delegation of those authorities. I don't ever want my kindness to be mistaken for weakness. I come from resilient people, and I have to fight for those people. We simply cannot take the good in this relationship and refuse to discuss the bad. We can't ignore each other. We take this very seriously, I, and I want you to hear our request. And as was stated by a port commissioner that we both know and respect, a relationship, in this relationship, we don't want to remember, be remembered for how it started, but how we finish it. Thank you. Our language was taken from us, our culture was taken from us, our way of life, and nearly almost our land to where we are almost extinct but we are still here. And I just want to say, I am very thankful that you guys are recognizing that. On our ancestral land, to wave the Puyallup flag means everything to my hutch. And I just want to raise my hands to you and say thank you.
I think we just got an advantage with Inslee wanting to be president. He's going to be wanting all of the tribes to make campaign donations and endorse him. And he's been a complete jackass about LNG. To test Ramona's theory, Dakota approached Inslee at a fundraiser, but could only laugh as Inslee brushed him aside. However, it didn't take long for the governor to change his stance. Therefore, I cannot in good conscience support continued construction of a liquefied natural gas plant in Tacoma or a methanol production facility in Kalama. While appreciating the governor's words, protectors continued to make clear that only action would make a difference. The Water Warriors and Tribal Allies will participate in four days of traditional ceremony on the beach in front of the LNG facility. has a future and I stand here with my future we have come a long way with the city of Tacoma and appreciate all of the work that they're trying to do to become good neighbors and right the wrongs of the past that have been done by the city of Tacoma to the Puyallup tribe of Indians but we demand that they hear our cries hearing after hearing rally after rally Prayer after prayer, the Puyallup tribe, as tribes have done throughout history, continued their fight to protect their inherent ways of life and their future. Youth from the Global Sunrise Movement marched to the city council chambers demanding change on the environment. In a historic and triumphant moment, tribal climate activists marched in to meet them as both groups addressed the city council together. Tribal activists and allies finished a four-day march from the Tacoma LNG to bring their climate message to Jay Ensley's doorstep. As people gathered at the state capitol, the governor was in New York addressing a Climate Alliance conference. When it comes to acting on climate, the world needs to know that the emphasis in the U.S. is on the states. But as the day turned, it became increasingly clear that the protectors at the people's house didn't fit the governor's narrative and they were asked to leave. With the protectors politely refusing that request and stating their intention to stay, Inslee State Patrol came out in riot gear. The right to assemble at the state house is unassailable and the group was defiant about protecting that right. As the protectors were pushed back, the prayer continued. Move, get back. Move, get back. Move, get back. 
Those on the front line started to speak to the police standing in front of them, praying for them and reminding them that this is a peaceful gathering. At least one of the officers was visibly affected as his eyes welled up and he fought to hold back the tears. After another attempt to silence indigenous and environmental voices, the protectors vowed to put pressure on Inslee to live up to his words. <laughs> Greeting him on his campaign stops, they kept their message clear. In December of 2019, it was the Puyallup tribe taking the lead again by becoming the first tribe in the nation to declare a climate emergency. But hours later, on the same day, Puget Sound Clean Air Agency granted the LNG plant's final air permit. We had the tribe declare a climate emergency this morning and then Puget Sound Clean Air Agency approves the liquefied natural gas facility permit midday right after that, you know, so it was a blatant act of disrespect towards the Puyallup tribe and a slap in the face, honestly, if you ask me, you know, let's get away from that. You know what I mean? Let's get away from that and just, and just sit down and listen. Actually sit down and listen to the First Nations. And by Puget Sound Clean Air, Clean Air Agency doing this, they've literally locked the citizens of Tacoma in a 50 year death contract with a toxic air pollution facility. Let's be truthful on what it's called. It's not a liquefied natural gas facility. It's a toxic air pollution facility. Toxic, it is toxic to your health. Look at the placement of all the fossil fuel industry plants from Canada all the way down. Where are they placed? Right there smack dab on the side of an Indian reservation. You know, we signed these peace treaties with the United States to live peacefully alongside of them and still and still live our inherent ways of life. You know, that's what's guaranteed under the treaty. We didn't give the they didn't give us anything. We gave them land, if anything, and, and retained our ways of life, our inherent ways of life. So shame on Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, shame on PSC and shame for everybody else helping in the process. After months of pressure, the governor finally met a small group of tribal members and allies in February, 2020. But any progress was lost just a few weeks later when the state went into a lockdown after the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. After a court case between the Air Agency and the tribe, PSC's permit was affirmed by yet another state agency the Pollution Control Hearing Board. That decision has been appealed. In 1854, we signed a peace treaty with the United States. And Governor Stevens made two promises to us during the signing of this, these, these treaties. He said these treaties shall remain intact as long as the trees grow and the rivers run. Well, our trees are burning and our glaciers are drying up. So where does that leave us? Promise number two, you sign these treaties or you'll walk knee deep in the blood of your people. They allegedly call these peace treaties, but peace is one thing that we haven't known because a hundred years after signing them, we have to fight for these rights. We have to fight for our inherent ways of life. We deal with the pollution. See, in the 1960s during the fishing wars, the game warden said that we, that we overfished our rivers. That's why the salmon were gone. But I remember, our ancestors remembered a time when, when the salmon used to be a uh, hundred pounds, almost six feet long. They said it was us that was overfishing these waters, but the whole time it was pollution from these facilities that they put right on our reservations. You look at the placement of U.S. oil, you look at the placement at the one in Swinomish, you look at all the, the, the tar sands exactly where, exactly where they come from. It's systematic oppression. You take away the food source and you kill the indigenous people that are there. You see, I was out there with my sons and my sons are starting to become lost because my sons want to learn how to live our inherent ways of life, how to smoke salmon, how to harvest it. But guess what there isn't out there anymore? We did 15 drifts straight. 15 drifts straight and we caught two salmon. Two salmon and 15 drifts. 
My heart is absolutely broken because this is what my sons get to see in their generation, but I still get out there and bite tooth and nail and try to catch as many salmon as I can so I can show them how to live our inherent ways of life, how to live off these lands. The LNG fight rests on the appeal, but whatever the outcome, the Puyallups and the rest of the tribes in North America will continue the centuries-long fight to live and thrive with their inherent ways of life in their ancestral homes. This is our ancestral lands. You know, if this place is built, we can't just pack up and move. We've been here since time immemorial. Where are we gonna go? We gotta live down here with this threat on our lands. We can't just pack up the whole tribe and leave. No, we gotta stand up and fight back. Stand up and defend our lands. Climate change is real. That's Mother Earth proving she's getting ready to fight back. She isn't gonna let us keep living like this and making these choices that are destroying her. We're letting these corporations making these choices thinking that we can't stand up to them because we're standing up to money. No, there's too many of us. There's a lot of us out here. And if we all stood up at the same time, their corrupt game would be over.